All right, welcome everyone to this video. We're going to start talking about two component phase diagrams. So, <clears throat> right, as a reminder, right, for, we, for any phase diagram, we can talk about this phase rule, right, which describes how many phases we can have in equilibrium and how many degrees of freedom we have for those phases of equilibrium given number of components, right? So if we think of two components, right, C equals two, okay? then the phase rule comes out to be F equals four minus P, right? So, <clears throat> right, if we consider, say, um, limiting one of our phases, right? So, um, right, if we, if we think of limiting things at a certain temperature, right? So, right, because um, we can't really draw you know, or conceptualize very easily a, you know, four-dimensional, six-dimensional plot or something like that, right? Um, and so often what we try to do is we say, okay, let's let's hold some of our degrees of freedom constant. Even though we don't need to, let's consider them to be constant, right? So, right, so at a certain temperature, what does our phase diagram look like, right, and things of that nature, okay? Um, so again, let's say we're limiting temperature, okay, we're considering something isothermal, right? And then if we limit the temperature, right, then that means our number of degrees of freedom effectively get reduced by one, okay? Right, in which case <clears throat> then our phase diagram, right, has at most, right, um, three, or sorry, most two degrees of freedom, right? Um, <clears throat> Right, um, and uh, right, and, and looks like a single component phase diagram, basically. Right, so again, a single component phase diagram has like f equals three minus p. Right, and so if we consider a two component phase diagram where we're considering things isothermal, right, constant temperature, then we can right con consider drawing a phase diagram that looks a lot like, say, our one component phase diagrams. Okay. Now the thing is, right, is that our our phase diagram is no longer temperature versus pressure, right? We're holding temperature constant, so now we have to consider something else, in which case we're considering, say, composition, okay? Right, versus pressure, okay? Um, <clears throat> right, so that's right. So so again, we've talked about single component, right? The only degrees of freedom you have are things like temperature and pressure and stuff, right? For multiple components, one of those degrees of freedom is chemical composition, right? You can have a different mixture of um, compound A and B, okay? Um, and that can potentially represent a different phase. So, <clears throat> right, in general, to study multi-component systems, we try limiting one or more variable, okay, like temperature, pressure, composition, okay? and then make just a two-dimensional phase diagram, which we're very comfortable and familiar with, right? Um, <clears throat> and then we can ask questions about when does the equilibrium occur, where does it occur, and try to understand things given the restriction that one of these components is being held constant. Okay. So let's, again, consider this, where we're going to hold temperature constant, okay, <clears throat> and look at pressure versus chemical composition, okay? If we assume an ideal solution, right, then we're obeying Raoult's law. And so in which case, right, um, the total pressure, which is the pressure of A plus pressure of B, is just related with the mole fraction of A times the pressure of pure A plus the mole fraction of B times the pressure of pure B, right? Plugging in for the relationship between the mole fraction of A and B, right, we can get then the total pressure as a function of just the mole fraction of A times the um, <clears throat> right, with, with like pressures of pure A and pure B, okay? And so that's plotted off on the right, okay? We're plotting pressure versus chemical composition, right? Um, mole fraction in the liquid phase of A, where the slope, right, is that PA minus PB star, okay? And the y-intercept happens to be PB star, okay? Just a straight line, right, above this line, Right, you'll have the liquid phase that's stable. Below the line is the vapor phase that's stable, right? Um, <clears throat> okay, right, and again, this is assuming a constant temperature, right? 
Um, and this, right, is like a normal phase diagram, right? Um, again, I'm, I'm plotting pressure versus chemical composition. Okay. Um, and again, um, <clears throat> right, that phase boundary between the liquid and vapor is related with the vapor pressure, right? That's where you have an equilibrium. And this line that we've plotted, right, P equaling XA, PA star, blah, 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 right? That, that line is a line of the vapor pressure, right, of this mixture, right? It's the total vapor pressure of the mixture, okay? And so that total vapor pressure of the mixture is giving you where the equilibrium between the vapor and liquid phase, right? And then right at higher pressures, liquid is going to be more stable, and at lower pressures, the glass is going to be more stable, right? All right. <clears throat> so again, we, we've experienced this um, already, right? But the composition between liquids and um, gases, right? When we have mixture, right? The, the, the composition, right? The mole fraction in the liquid phase is not necessarily the same as that in the gas phase, right? Um, <clears throat> so again, often we'll use Y sub A to get the um, the, the mole fraction in the gas phase. And so using um, the relationship between the mole fraction and the gas phase and the total pressure, and the pressure of A and the pressure of B, right, we can relate the mole fraction, okay, in the gas phase, right, with the pressure, the mole fraction of A and, and B and such, right. Um, in the liquid phase, right, It'd get plotted there. Okay. Um, and so using that relationship, okay, um, right, uh, here what we have plotted, right, is the mole fraction in the vapor phase versus the mole fraction in the liquid phase, right? Um, okay, and this plot is just kind of here to kind of show you, right, um, the fact that, uh, right, as the volatility um, of, say, B in this system goes towards zero, okay, um, right, uh, then, then, for example, um, right, if that's the case, right, then the mole fraction of A in the gas phase, right, is always equal to one, which is what we see here, the very top, kind of this 1,000, here, okay, that's related with the ratio of PA over PB star, right, which this will go to infinity as PB goes to zero, right, and so, right, and that's what we should expect, right, for, as the pressure of A, pure A, vapor pressure of pure A becomes greater and greater compared to pure B, right, I should expect more A in the gas phase than B, okay, assuming, say, an equal mixture of the two, right, um, because A is more volatile, Right, you have water and oil sitting on the ground. Right, you expect that you'll have more oil in the gas phase than the water because it's a more volatile liquid. Right, and it's the same thing true if you mix those two things together. Right now, oil and water don't really mix. Right, they phase separate, but that's that's not the point. Okay, so <clears throat> we can also use this relationship between. Um, mole fractions in the vapor phase and liquid phase and things like that to rewrite the total pressure in terms of the mole fraction in the vapor phase. And that is what we have plotted here. Okay. Um, and again, here I'm plotting the total pressure, okay, um, versus the mole fraction, right, in the vapor phase. Now, <clears throat> Again, here, the different plots are related with the relationship between the volatility of A versus B, right? Um, right. <clears throat> and we see, right, that, that um, if, if B is not really volatile and I mainly have B, right, then my total pressure is very, very low, right, compared to um, if A is, you know, very volatile uh, and B or if A and B are relatively equal volatility, right, then they, they potentially have very high vapor pressures. 